Will a homosexual once healed have heterosexual desires? You know, there are many factors that play a part in how extensive the transformation will be for any given individual. God has the power to achieve complete healing in everyone. However, he allows us free will to decide how committed we're going to be to the process. Most failure to realize complete transformation can be found in a reluctance to go the distance. The person must also recognize that they cannot heal themselves and that they must pursue an intimate and dependent relationship with God for the power and direction to be healed. And many people don't do that. Many people are motivated out of a performance orientation rather than genuine love for Christ, and that will shut down the healing process as well. Others find it difficult to rely on God, to believe what he says, and to fully commit to his kingdom. That will stop the healing process for sure. They get sidetracked by self-hatred, self-doubt, self-effort, certain psychological theories, their gay friends, or even a doubting church. Some put a timetable on God. Others don't approach his promises with faith, but with an attitude of, I believe it when I see it. Some simply love the idolatry and the pleasure of homosexual lust and refuse to forsake it completely. Others have multiple causal factors for their brokenness, which take longer to uncover and heal. The gay community would like you to think that being healed means that you no longer have any homosexual temptations. Well, that's a false criteria, one not used for any other form of sickness. If I haven't smoked for 20 years but am today tempted, according to that criteria, I would have to call myself a smoker, even though I haven't smoked for 20 years. No matter what sin you've used to commit, there will always be memories that tempt in periods of weakness and distraction. This is not peculiar to homosexual lust. Temptation isn't the criteria. The criteria for considering yourself healed is a consistent history of how you see yourself, how you operate, what primarily drives you, and what you identify yourself with. One person's healing can be a longer and more arduous process than another's. The turnaround occurs more quickly in cases where the person has refused to adopt the identity of homosexual or refused to enter into the darker and more perverse activities found in the gay subculture or had some positive experience with heterosexual sex prior to changing over to homosexual partners or started the healing process early in life or has had a powerful revelation of God's love and forgiveness deep within their soul. In short, where there is knowledge, commitment, a generous time frame, and a smaller number of causal factors to overcome, the healing comes quicker. Did you know that the odds are very high that someone you know and care about is struggling with sexual identity confusion, otherwise known as homosexuality? It may only be 3 to 4 percent of the population that admits to being exclusively homosexually oriented, but when you add in those who won't admit it, as well as the much larger number of people who have only partial confusion in that area, you have a much larger percentage. Large enough, in fact, that it's safe to say that someone you know is gay or at least struggling with such feelings to some degree. I'd like to let you know about a great book for family and friends of those who struggle with homosexual confusion. It's called Someone I Love is Gay by Anita Worthen and Bob Davies. From her experience as the mother of a gay son, Anita offers practical advice for how to respond during such a crisis. Having grown up with homosexual confusion, co-author Bob Davies provides that important added perspective. To get Someone I Love is Gay, simply go to purepassion.us. That's purepassion.us. So what is love? God's definition of love is commitment and sacrifice. The Apostle Paul writes in his first letter, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, 1 John 3, 16. This is love, he writes, that God sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins, 1 John 4, 10. 
So according to scripture, love is sacrifice. John also writes, love not with words, but with actions and in truth. First John 3, 18. In other words, love expresses itself in appropriate other-centered action. And we find the ultimate example and definition of love in this verse from John the Apostle. God is love, 1 John 4, 16. This is why the world does not know love, because it does not know God. The more you get to know God through his son, Jesus Christ, who is the exact representation of his being, the more you will know love. 